Welcome to the lengthiest chapter in the whole framework, Chapter 6, Measurement. In the previous chapter, we talked about recognizing an element of the financial statements. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the amount that we measure a recognized element with. This would require a selection of what we call as measurement bases. The framework recognizes two measurement bases, historical cost and current value. Historical cost could very well be your favorite as it simply refers to the transaction price. Changes in value are normally not recognized unless it refers to impairment, depreciation, interest accrual, and the like. The next measurement basis is the current value. Current value measures provide updated monetary information that reflect conditions at the measurement date. Current value measurement bases include fair value, value in use or fulfillment value, and current cost. Let's talk about fair value. Fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Fair value is not derived from the transaction price, thus it is not affected by transaction costs. Value in use for assets and fulfillment values for liabilities both refer to the present value of the movement in cash and economic resources for the use of an asset or the fulfillment of a liability. Unlike fair value that takes the perspective of market participants, value in use and fulfillment values are entity-specific, meaning it will depend on the specific entity. They're, they are also both based on future cash flows. Therefore, they do not include past transaction costs incurred during acquisition, but include the present value of expected transaction costs for disposal. Let's now talk about current cost. The current cost of an asset is the cost of an equivalent asset at the measurement date, comprising the consideration that would be paid at the measurement date plus the transaction costs that would be incurred at that date. Current cost and historical costs are similar in that they are entry values, meaning these are the values upon acquisition as contrasted with fair value and value in use which are exit values, or values that consider the eventual disposal of the asset or liability. It is however different from historical cost in that current cost reflects conditions at the measurement date. Let's say for example you have a 3-year-old delivery vehicle. If the question you ask is, how much will I receive if I sell this asset on this date, then that is an exit value. And the measurement basis for this particular question is, you're right, fair value. If your question is, what is the present value of the cash that I am expected to receive from the use of this asset and when I eventually sell it for disposal? Again, that's exit value because you're thinking about the use and eventual sale of the asset. The measurement basis for that example is value in use. But if your question is, if I buy a similar 3-year-old delivery vehicle in this state, how much will I pay for it? This time, you're talking about purchasing a similar 3-year-old delivery vehicle, same model, same make. That is what is referred to as entry value. And in this particular example, it refers to current cost. Now that we know what the measurement bases are, the next question we need to ask is, what factors do we consider in choosing a measurement basis? According to the framework, it will be necessary to consider the nature of the information that the measurement basis will produce in the financial statements, as well as other factors. This will of course mean that we have to go back to our fundamental qualitative characteristics of relevance and faithful representation, as well as the enhancing qualitative characteristics of comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. Let us take the first fundamental characteristic, relevance. When deciding which measurement basis to use, the relevance of the information is affected by the characteristics of the asset or liability and how the asset or liability contributes to future cash flows. For example, when the asset in question is highly sensitive to market price changes, such as a derivative, current value measurements may be more appropriate and not historical cost. In the case of faithful representation, the concern is always about uncertainties. 
in the past chapter, we have mentioned measurement uncertainty and the use of estimates. But for faithful representation considerations on measurement basis, we also have to consider outcome uncertainty or the uncertainty about the amount or timing of any inflow or outflow of economic benefits that will result from an asset or a liability. As well as existence uncertainty or the uncertainty whether an asset or liability exists. Outcome and existence uncertainty would sometimes contribute to measurement uncertainty, and these things should be considered in the choice between historical value, or historical cost, and current value. But then again so far, we have only talked about the measurement of assets and liabilities. What about equity? How is it measured? Total equity is not measured directly because, like what we pointed out in Chapter 4, equity is residual. Although total equity is not measured directly, some components of it are measured directly, such as, for example, the total par value of the shares issued and outstanding. Chapter 6 concludes by talking about cash flow-based measurement techniques. Cash flow-based measurement techniques is one way to estimate a certain measurement, but it is not a measurement basis. Our measurement bases are really just historical cost and current value, which includes fair value, value in use or fulfillment value, and current cost. In other words, cash flow measurement techniques can be used in any of the three current value measurements. Here are our key takeaways for this video. There are two measurement bases, historical cost and current value. There are three choices for current value, fair value, value in use or fulfillment value, and current cost. Fair value and value in use or fulfillment value are both exit values, while historical cost and current cost are both entry values. We need to consider the nature of the information provided, other factors, and qualitative characteristics, including fundamental and enhancing qualitative characteristics, in deciding which measurement basis to use. With that, we close off Chapter 6. Feel free to re-watch this video and our other videos in case there was something that you missed. Whenever you're ready, I'll see you in Chapter 7, Presentation and Disclosure.